Hello, Jeff Zwerink here, and welcome back to Give and Take. This is the segment of our show where we explore important scientific ideas and look at how they align with the truth of the Bible. Today I'm joined by Dr. Hugh Ross, and we're going to explore the question, does the Bible teach Big Bang cosmology? Hugh, it's good to have you back on the segment again. Well, thank you. You know, it's kind of interesting because the idea that the Bible and Big Bang cosmology go hand in hand is kind of attacked from all sides. I mean, you've got skeptics who say, well, often claim we're often just trying to read Big Bang cosmology into the Bible. And you have a number of Christians who say that, oh, this is just some secular idea to prove the Bible wrong. So before we delve into that intersection, why don't we get a picture of just what does Big Bang cosmology say? Well, I think it's important that for people to realize there are many Big Bang creation models out there. Okay. But what they all share in common is this idea that the universe arises from an infinitesimally very hot uh, beginning. Okay. Expands from that beginning. Okay. Expands from that beginning under laws of physics that remain constant throughout the history of the universe where one of those laws is a pervasive law of decay, or a law of entropy, or thermodynamics, which means that the universe gets colder and colder as it gets older and older. Okay, so we start from this really hot, dense state, laws of physics govern the expand, you know, as you expand from that state, laws of physics operate so that you get stars, galaxies, clusters as you cool down, and ultimately the usable energy is decaying away, the basic features there. Yeah. Now, I do wanna highlight, uh, you know, th there's this idea that the universe is in this hot, dense state and Big Bang cosmology is describing that, but there seems to be kind of two usages of that term Big Bang. One is that description, and then the other is this idea that there's a genuine singularity or beginning. Mm -hmm. So how does that work out or how have you wrestled with that? Yeah, when people talk about Big Bang cosmology, they're usually thinking about the history of the universe. Mm -hmm. Then there's the other question, well, what about the very beginning of the universe? So how much do you understand about the physics of the beginning of the universe? Yeah, and I think that's a pretty... Uh Fascinating topic out in the in the top or in the arena of science today. So so let's move from that and let me just throw this question to you. Given that that's what Big Bang cosmology talks about, how would you argue that the Bible describes this kind of universe, or the Bible talks about a universe that matches this description? Well, I would argue the Bible only talks about it. Talks about it repeatedly and specifically. I mean, you've got about a dozen passages in the Bible that talk about the universe has a beginning. A beginning includes the beginning of space and time itself. Likewise, nearly a dozen passages is a talk about the universe expanding from that beginning. Well, so, so let's explore. What, I mean, obviously, you got Genesis 1-1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. What right. are some of the other passages uh, that you think point to that beginning most conclusively? Well, you've got the New Testament passage in Hebrews 11-3, the universe that we can detect did not come from that which we can detect. Or Paul's writings in Timothy and Titus, where he speaks about God's activities before time even began. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, and likewise, you have many passages that talk about how the laws of physics don't change. What, give us a couple of those. Well, there's uh, probably the two most explicit are in Romans 8 and Jeremiah 33. In Jeremiah 33, God is basically complaining to the Jews about how they change their mind all the time. Mm -hmm. He says, I'm the God that doesn't change. As evidence, look at the laws that govern the heavens and the earth. As they don't change, I don't change. Romans 8 tells us that this pervasive law of decay encompasses the entirety of the universe, implying all the space-time dimensionality of the universe is subject to this pervasive law of decay. Some translations say law of corruption, but basically making the point everything is running down, everything is decaying, something that virtually the whole book of Ecclesiastes is devoted to. No, that's a good point. Yeah, everything is futility according to the book of Ecclesiastes, right. at least in terms of our human strife. I tell so. people, look at one another. We're all decaying, right? <laughs> that's fair. It's, it's very clear that the universe is as well. So, right. Now, so you, you mentioned uh, there's a beginning, there's uh, constant laws of physics, there's uh, uni or decay, but then there's also this expansion going on. So yes. where, how does the Bible talk about expansion, and do you think the biblical authors were thinking about expansion in that case? Well, typically in the English Bibles, it's talking about uh, God stretching out the heavens, mm -hmm. but the Hebrew verb nata really means expansion. The fact that we see in 11 different texts, it uses the verb nata in all three Hebrew forms, basically tells us we're not, this isn't just figures of speech. The Bible literally is talking or claiming that the universe is expanding. 
And I've been accused of being a 21st century astronomer reading this into the text. So I wound up writing a blog saying, no, it's not unique to people living in the 21st century. Jewish and Christian theologians writing hundreds of years ago, sometimes thousands of years ago, commented on these biblical texts, interpreting the same way uh, that we're suggesting. So even, even just the idea that it uses this language that matches what we see today, whether they understood it or not, is remarkable. But it might even be able to push it harder and say, yeah, they were actually thinking about expansion as your claim. They were. I mean, Nachmanides in particular wrote about the expansion of the universe in the 1200s. So, so as you use this idea, what sort of pushback do you get from it when you make the claim or talk about how the Bible talks about Big Bang cosmology? What sort of pushback do you get from that? Well, I get pushback from people who are reluctant to accept the fact that the Bible has predictive power. Mm -hmm. And I think the best way to respond to that is say it's not just the physics of the universe where the Bible demonstrates predictive power. It's everywhere in terms of the Bible predicting future scientific discoveries but also future historical events in human history. And probably the prime example of that is how much the Bible predicted about the future ministry of the Messiah. And mm -hmm. so just saying, hey, it's, this is a pervasive claim and the Bible stands alone in having a 100% accurate record uh, when it speaks about the future. You know, I, that really is a remarkable claim and a remarkable attribute of scripture is that it describes things that we can go back and measure uh, but it also describes things that will happen in the future that we can wait and see. Uh, right. You know, some of those may not happen in our lifetime, but that has happened throughout history. And to me, that's a remarkable testament that Scripture is not just a particular idea that men put down into words, that it really does come from Well, the that hand was of God, part of my conversion story, uh, Jeff. I mean, just seeing this remarkable predictive power in the Bible told me this couldn't come from a mere human source. It's got to come from one who actually created the universe. Well, thanks, Hugh. I appreciate your comments. You know, no matter how you slice it, when you look at how the Bible describes creation and what scientists understand about this universe, there is a remarkable correspondence. And that correspondence really does speak to the idea that there's a God who transcends space and time, who created all that we see and then reveals himself to us so that we can know him through the words of Scripture. You know, I would encourage you to go check out reasons.org and look for Hugh's post called Does the Bible Teach Big Bang Cosmology? And use this article to equip yourself to be able to share this remarkable truth to those God brings across your path.